<laughs> it's Martin Luther King Day, isn't it? Yes, MLK. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, MLK Day. Milk Day. Yeah, MLK. Good morning, everyone. How are you? We're glad you're with us this morning. Um, we're celebrating together Martin Luther King Day 2021. What a blessing. Yeah, Lorenz said the other day, oh, because you know, the people get the day off. I'm retired, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> But she said, oh, yeah, I forgot that January was uh, Black History Month. I said, it's February's Black History Month. <laughs> it's yeah. a day in January, yeah, yeah. but it's a month in yeah. February. Yeah, right. And I knew that because when we when I did... Um, so cool you'd know that, right? Well, I did this the show. We had a daily show, INN, uh -huh. and we had a teacher who wanted to, every single day in February, wanted something about black history. And then eventually we moved that into all... Every day we did something about everybody's his, uh, cultural history. But cool. she in particular, she was very... Uh, in interested in that, huh? Pushy. Pushy. Yeah. I was trying to say that nice. Like, yeah. I heard what you're saying. Yeah. Thanks. We'll run the show. You run your Spanish class. You know, I don't come into your Spanish class and tell you what to do. No, she was fine. And eventually she became, we became good friends because. Um, I, you saw her all the time. Yeah. I started using a lot of her kids and it was, oh, it was okay. all good. But yes, believe me, it's in my head. It's, it's February. February. <laughs> it's February. Is that nice and cool for you? Nile you. was yeah. so sweet. She put that in the yeah, fridge. I, I usually get a lukewarm uh, water to match my Christianity. That's because I gave, that's I gave it to him. I'm, I'm a lukewarm sorry. drinker of oh, water. Oh, yeah, right. right, right, right. <laughs> so that's what I get. Yeah. But no, this is nice and cold on a nice, going to be a hot day, hopefully. Yeah. Today we're in the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, and we'll start with around verse 11, maybe go back a few verses, and whatever. We'll th anyway, we'll start in verse 11. So just want you to get prepared for that as we get ready to pray and and go to the Word in prayer. Uh, go to the Lord in prayer. I guess he is the Word, isn't he? The yeah, Lord. Yeah. that's true. Yeah, even though I misspoke, it was true. <laughs> anyway, uh, we just, again, we should pray for our country. Um, I just, I just, I just, the hypocrisies and the, the, the political posturing um, yeah. is just absolutely. Well, we're close. Uh, it's horrible. Well, why do you need, you, you, you know, there was two things today that happened that just really, I laughed. I just, you know, they stopped the rehearsal for the president, uh, vice president right. Trump's um, um, inauguration. They stopped the rehearsal. And there were headlines that were saying that there were, there were threats. And what it was, was a mile away from their rehearsal, there was a fire in a homeless camp. Uh -huh. And uh, so it that's just. a threat? Yeah, yeah. You again what, said, you said vice I mean. president Trump. Oh, oh, Vice President, <laughs> yeah, Vice President uh, Biden. Biden. Yeah, thank you. When, it's, when, it, yeah, when yeah, we get yeah, to yeah. Wednesday, it'll, it'll be, be it'll hard. Be, yeah, it'll yeah. be hard for you to say President. Oh, Biden. President Biden. I've done. That. Yeah, but I'll, I'll forget. You know, yeah. I'll mess it all up. I always do. Right. Anyway, but I, I just I'm thinking about that. Going, oh, you got to be kidding me. Why, why would you make it sound like there were going to be riots when all it, all it was was a was a homeless fire camp? Why would you do stuff like that? Trying just, to sell newspapers. Yeah, it, I think there's a there's. It's politically motivated oh, personally sure. because yeah. it's well, who people owns don't the like newspapers? Trump. You yeah. know, they mm -hmm. just don't like him, and and uh, you know, I don't know what's going to happen when Joe Biden gets to be president. But you know, and the, and the other thing I heard, and I and I hope this people do not realize how horrible this is. But I, um, I, I heard there's already a caravan from Honduras that's making its way up with over a thousand people in it, in. Uh, because they think as soon as Joe Biden gets to be president, they can walk in the United States. Oh. Well, you, you know, you're dealing with people's lives. Those poor people in that caravan uh, that are in the, those cortes that take that mm -hmm. take those the money from people and abuse people and, and everything else. It's just, and there's, it's, it's horrible. And for people to make, statements that that would allow people to think that they could do stuff like that is absolutely ridiculous it's 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 not even a political issue it's a humanity issue those people coming in those caravans are going to get hurt and um i know they want asylum i know they want to be in the united states but there's there's a right way and a wrong way to do things and this is absolutely wrong those people will be hurt and that bothers me it bothers me a lot um and I and I've been bothered by this this conversation since the early '70s when my dad worked for Governor Evans and uh, in the state of Washington he was an advisor for the governor in the state of Washington, Governor Evans and and that's what he did he took care of the relationships between Mexico and the state of Washington for migrant affairs, and he had visit you know he he's visited the the palace in Mexico with the president of Mexico and everything else and he's that was my dad when he was alive he did all that and he would bring home pictures 
of how abusive things were for people who were trying to make it in the United States, and that's mm-hmm. not even running of young girls and boys and everything right. else. It's it's just horrible. The whole thing's horrible. So it's it's uh, you know I've I've been closer to it than a lot of people have because I got an inside view of some of that stuff, right. and um, and I just I just think it's horrible. And so when I hear things like that. Um, you know, really, the, the people don't understand. One of the best things that could happen is that wall, because it stops people from abusing people, and that's the bottom line. Yes. And, you, and you guys don't, people don't think that way. Political people don't. They they just want to. Anyway, whatever. I'm, I'm, I I I get irritated about that subject. So I, we should pray for. And all you of said that. coyotes. Yeah, coyotes. Coyotes. Yeah, yeah. Which uh, Trump at the remember at the debates yeah. said coyotes, and he got in trouble. Like people thought he meant real coyotes. Oh. <laughs> people are so stupid. <laughs> Just saying. I'm going to know, clarify. Right? He doesn't mean coyotes. I he mean, means the actually. The, 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 that's the what they're people called. The people who, who move people and you. Yes. And back in the seventies, it was three thousand dollars a head. Were they called coyotes back then? Mm-hmm. Okay. They've been kind of both called that for a long, long time. Okay. And and it, it was three thousand bucks a head to move somebody from wow. Mexico <clears throat> or Central America into the United States, and uh, and a lot of those people didn't make it here in Los Angeles. In in you know I think it was seventy six, in nineteen seventy six here in Los Angeles at Magic Mountain they there was a, 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 a big you know those big milk trucks like mm-hmm. a water truck the big milk trucks. Yeah, they found I think forty six people dead inside of one of those because they were moving them up the freeway and they were going to get caught. So they pulled them in there and they left the truck there with the people inside, locked inside and yeah. locked inside and they all died. It's like, come on, you guys, this you don't understand. This thing is a big deal. It's not a small thing. It's the, it's horrible the way we treat human human beings. So anyway, I just uh, <laughs> want to want to pray for that. What it was like it's, it's not worth repeating. <laughs> <laughs> he calls him. Uh, he's, he's trying to call. Oh, he's a goofball. Yeah. The worst is yet to come. Yeah. Especially when this goofball takes off. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I don't want to make any political. I'm not making political statements. I'm making statements about, you know, what I'm not. I'm not. You, you think you can try to guess what I am, but I don't know if you can really. But the bottom line is, yeah, I have certain opinions that are important to me. Billy and I have talked about this. One is. If one is the abortion issue. That's a big deal for us. Yes, so it should yeah. be for every Christian. <clears throat> it, 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 yeah, yeah. Every Christian should recognize that we are made in the image of God, and, and God is not happy with us. And and we, I think you even said yesterday, no, not yesterday, Friday. but Friday, that you think we're in the, in the middle of being punished. Or, yeah. Or, or, yeah. We're under God's wrath right now. Yeah. 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 And I think He's, we are. Well, judgment. Let's just say judgment. Well, but He's that's that's His wrath. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's right. And that's not a place you want to be. And and yeah. I think sometimes we forget about how, you know, we forget who God is and who we are. We think we've swapped places in the so many times. You just summarized <laughs> last night what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What were you talking about? Well, Noah, but I was I was putting Noah just a little lower on the rung and putting I said I said this is not a story about the ark or Noah. It's a story about God. <laughs> it's about God doing yeah. amazing things and chasing us down. Right. right. And because uh, you know yeah. I, I the question be like why Noah? Why? He's in the right place at the right time. <laughs> you yeah. say, wouldn't find Noah get someone else. God had to pick somebody. They're all corrupt. He picked Noah. Yeah. Except Noah did was an honor. He well, did the, honor God. Yes. So now once. Like, yeah. yeah uh, seven times, and he never talked back. That was yeah. interesting. I found out seven times. Yeah. Uh, God speaks to Noah. And Noah never asks a question or talks back. So yeah, I'm not Noah. I didn't. I don't do everything. All, he did all that God commanded him. Noah did that four times. So good for Noah for that. Yeah. But um, but it's all it's God. It's it, it's the honors God. Yeah. It's a testimony to God. And it's like you were saying this morning about faith. You were saying we need to go to something. You said no, we need to go straight to God because right. you just whatever. I got a um a meme or something from my brother, um, who does not um. Who doesn't know the Lord? And I've, you know, I've been having a relationship with him and trying to, you know, whatever. And it was good. It said, faith is th- faith is this, and faith takes you through the storm. Faith takes you that, that. It was all about faith, faith, faith. But, so I wrote, amen. But then I wrote, the pertinent question is, faith in who or what? Yeah, yeah. I didn't get an answer, and I, I might have offended him, but it's like, um, it's not faith in faith. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I know Jesus said, woman, your faith has saved you, but it's implied your faith in me has saved you. Right. You got to right. put your faith in the right thing, person. And even for a Jew, it's not it's it, it, that their faith is a faith in an Old Testament conversation about God, 
And the reality is, is Jesus. But don't is we have faith? Of, don't we have faith in our abilities? Yeah, our intellect. Yeah, a lot of our things. Money. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Right faith, faith takes you through the storm. It's like right. you can't. I love the word faith, but when you co-opt it and put it into a meme without Jesus or God, you just talk about and he even used script. You know, it's, I just wanted to correct it. That's yeah, no, that's, I was agreeing with that. Yeah, I know, but I, right, I, yeah. I questioned that. I after I did, I thought, uh, yeah, well, because yeah. what he thinks is he's blind, so he thinks, oh, he'll that I'll love this, yeah. but I'm not gonna love anything but the Bible. <laughs> you know, I'm just sorry. <laughs> Don't take me there. Huh? Yeah, the religious stuff, but he doesn't know that it's not his fault. It's yeah. not his fault. Yeah, it's like you know, now gets me candy. And um, she thinks I like every every piece of sugar, which I don't. I mean, I could, but but I, I like what she gave me today. <laughs> thank you, Dale. Yeah, thank you, Dale. <laughs> but my, my yeah, she's just being nice. But my brother, you know, when you she, he thinks I'm a fanatic. He thinks he's going to heaven. We're all going to heaven. Right. He's Jewish, and I'm just a little over the edge or something. And so he you, sends you're me way out there. But he, he but he meant he meant well. No, he did. He, he did thought, well. oh, Billy will like this. Yeah. And I said, Amen. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> well, yes, so that how that that's, that's yeah. that works. Our prayer time really needs to be about about people and people's lives and and um, and God chasing after them. And you yeah. know, I I really really hope I I am praying and I hope I, I really hope that God is is about to have another revival in our country. I I just oh, I'm you gotta just, remember I'm me after excited to say about something. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. I forgot. I'm excited about a revival. I, 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 I read through the history of revivals a little bit of it yesterday, but I read Saturday, just through a bunch of history of revivals. Man, it was just so exciting to me, to see God's hand move in humanity, and that's our only hope. That's our only salvation. And you know, and, and the Stoics. I even heard. I even heard someone today, um, say that that hope. Hope is uh, is not a good thing. <laughs> I even heard that. It's like, well, okay, you know, because it disappoints you. It's overrated. It's an overrated human human emotion. I think is what they said. Wow. Anyway, it's just like, you know what? That's what the Stoics believe. That sounds like a humanist or yeah, a pragmatist. Yeah. Well, it's a Stoic. That's exactly yeah, part well, of their. Just saying, yeah, they yeah. they wouldn't call themselves Stoics. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what. That's exactly one of their tenets. There, there are nine tenets of Stoicism, and one of them is they don't believe in hope. So anyway, um, man, I'm just, I'm just telling you, it's just really, a, it's a really crazy place we live in, and I just can't wait for God's Holy Spirit to just come down and just begin to, to move in people's lives in such a way that people start giving their heart to Him. I heard about uh, someone came up to me after yesterday's sermon and told me. That in Bakersfield, California, yeah, right that. now. Did you hear that? I heard that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think I told you maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that in Bakersfield, California, even right now. I mean, like yesterday, um, there were they were having tent meetings and hundreds and hundreds of people were being saved. I think that's just right. awesome. You know, that's exciting. I do. That's where Ansel and Linda are. Yeah, yeah. We need to pray for uh, them to this morning. If you don't know. If you didn't hear, Ansel and Linda are people that have been around this church for a long time. They're they're stalwarts of the faith here. They're wonderful people. Um, really, they are wonderful people. They're just, they're salt of the earth kind of people. <laughs> they're really cool. And anyway, um, I, they think uh, that that Ansel not think I think they know now. But Ansel Ansel had a stroke, and he had a few of them, I believe. And so they're gonna he's in the hospital in Bakersfield. They went up there for a funeral for. Um, so one of their family members' funerals as they were up there, and uh, after the funeral, he had a stroke. So we're praying for them, and we'll continue to pray for them, and Gina and all the rest of the family. So yeah, and all that. So there's there's a lot of those kinds of things to lift up in prayer today. Anything that you have to share today about prayer? Um, no, or nothing on the at all. <laughs> yeah, it was just something with you privately. Oh, okay. that was encouraging. Very okay. encouraging. All right. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. We just thank you, God, that you're an awesome, great, good, holy God. <laughs> wow. I can't believe, Lord, that I, I really can't. It's, it, it's, it's an anomaly. It's amazing. It's, it's beyond description that we even have the opportunity to speak to you, that we are, we are not only encouraged, we're commanded to come into your, your throne room boldly. You are the king, and we are the... the the most despicable subjects on the planet and it, because there, there's sin in us and yet you sent your son to remove the sin so that we might walk into your throne room and we might 
have the privilege of addressing you. So, Father, we come to you, and our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. May you be kept holy in our lives, Lord God. And may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I cannot imagine, Lord God, anybody in heaven getting away with much. <laughs> <laughs> so I just ask God right now that you would do a wonderful work on in us and around us in, in our communities, especially here at Las Palmas Church. I pray, Father, that you would do a great, wonderful, mighty work of Jesus, that you would send your Holy Spirit and revival would happen and people would say yes and amen and that people's lives would be tra changed and transformed and that hope would come. We pray, Lord God, that as we look at your word today and as we see these miraculous acts that take place in Paul's lives, in Paul's life and other disciples' lives, I pray, Father, that you would help us to to not only desire those kinds of things in our life, but I pray that you would give us the faith to understand them and to see them happen. We thank you, Father, for all the people that we've talked about, for Linda and Ansel, especially Ansel right now. Pray for his healing. and We pray for Linda and, and, and uh, Gina and their family, and we pray, Father, that they uh, would have your comfort um, right now. Please be with Linda, we pray in Jesus' name. Father, we just I thank you for Shelly, Lord. I, she does mm -hmm. have COVID, and I just pray that you administer to her and that you would help her there, Lord, with with her teenage kids. Help them to be responsible, <laughs> Lord. Be with my kids. Help them to be responsible. Help their mom as much as they can and keep them safe. We just thank you, God, for an opportunity to come and to bring all these things. Um, we hear that someone passed away uh, and so we just there's just lots of things like that, Lord. There's a lot of people that we've been praying for and talking to and, and talking about. And, and so, Father, for all those people, all those that we have talked about in, the, in, in our recent past uh, on, this pro, on this platform, we pray that you would continue to minister to them and bring them health, bring comfort to their families. Thank you, Father, for that. And, Father, for our country, what a mess we're in because we are so easy not just to believe a lie but to run to tell a lie we are so easy to do that lord and so father i pray that you would forgive us <clears throat> i confess the sins of our country to you i i'm sorry father that that we have murdered people young babies i'm sorry father that we have we have not given forgiveness to those who are the most heinous of criminals including me i'm sorry lord that we have not uh, not extended your grace and mercy to people that need it and want it. I'm sorry, Lord God, that we have been so full of ourselves and not full of the Spirit. I am sorry, Lord God. I'm sorry for all the things that we have done to not humble ourselves, but to promote ourselves and to be full of pride instead of humility. I'm sorry, Lord God, for all of these things that we do as human beings and especially in this country where you've given us great privilege to worship you. Father, please forgive us. Please forgive us. Please forgive us, Lord. Thank you, God, for... <laughs> Thank you, Father, for letting us come and letting us bring these things before you. Lord, I don't know how you stand it that we'll come to bring all of our filth in front of you, but Lord, you're, you're there and say that you love us and you clean us up and, and you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so, Father, I pray that you would begin to do that in our country, that you would begin to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, that there would be a great revival that would sweep across this land. Thank you, Father, for that. Thank you for what you bring to us. Thank you for a, a great study in your word today. <coughs> Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Yes, Lord, we do thank you, and we do put our hope in you, and we put hope in, in your righteousness, not ours, and I uh, just agree with this prayer, and we, and we do lift up the family of Jesus, yes, uh, who's Lord. passed, and, um, and you know, just, uh, Lord, we have, I pray that you would focus us on you today, and yes. on your glory, and on the, the, your greatness, and uh, as we read about the things that happened with Paul, we want to just uh, thank you for, down through history, uh, being a good, good God, and and taking care of us and you'll take care of us today Lord. so we look forward to reading about you and lifting you up in jesus name amen amen wow uh, verse 11 uh, starts out with what we talked about yesterday in church 
um, in our service. It says, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. <laughs> well, I looked at that and I thought, extraordinary miracles. I don't know what an extraordinary miracle is. Every miracle is extraordinary, mm -hmm. but it, it it's it's interesting um, because I don't know what that is. Except you know, it's, except maybe it's a miracle of revival, or maybe it's a miracle. You know, I guess they. I guess it was a common miracle. If you couldn't see, you'd have, you'd be able to see, or if you couldn't walk, you'd be able to walk, and those kind of common things that we talk about with miracles. But maybe these are extraordinary. Well, mine's a special. Yeah, special miracle. And then it's going to say, because mine's got a semicolon, so yeah. it says so that from his butt. You know, so right, I. Mine does I too. think Luke is setting up. Extraordinary just means odd, you know. If if somebody sees something and they say that's extraordinary, they go, "That's odd. That's it's different." Yeah. I don't see, and, and and this this handkerchief thing is kind of different. Well, but, yeah, it, yeah, you know, it's yeah, it's it's it's, different. It's, a, it's different. So well, it's like raising the dead, healing the sick. I mean, well, following in the shadow, follow, uh, touching going Jesus, in the shadow, yeah, like uh, Peter. And, and well, I was thinking of uh, the yeah. woman uh, the, that touched, the, touched Jesus. That was, Jesus. That's yeah. extraordinary. Yeah. yeah so yeah, I think yeah. there's certain ones that the Bible will say. Um, well, that word extraordinary, I looked it up because okay. I just, but it's very, it's, it doesn't give us any. Yeah, to me, I just, yeah. if I play a match game, I say odd. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't give us any really helpful hints about what the, what it is. But extra, this word extraordinary means not common. Yeah, that's right. That's what it means. Odd. It's yeah, <laughs> different. Odd. Yeah, it's not common. So that's exactly what the word means. Yeah, so Paul's uh, yeah, having yeah. Some, not, some not common miracles were happening yeah. by Paul. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what those were, but they were not common. But they were miraculous, and they were. And it says, but and this is really the important thing. The the the, whole, the verse eleven starts out with the one word, God. Right. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul. Not Paul did extraordinary miracles. God right. did extraordinary miracles through Paul. But it was through Paul. It was he was that he was the conduit that God used to bring these extraordinary miracles about. Um, and I still, I think he still does them today. Oh yeah, you know. So anyway, I know lots of people don't. But look, me being saved is an extraordinary miracle to me. So you have to believe in, you have to believe in the miraculous to have salvation, folks. Right. You just really do. Look, think about this. First John one night. If, if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, for me. To be cleansed from all unrighteousness, from every unrighteous thing, thought, attitude I've ever had in my life, for me to be cleansed from that is a miracle. Yep. That's miraculous. So even 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 the salvific understanding of Jesus Christ is miraculous. So anyway, so, so God, it, the, the, look. The, but, the, but that's a miracle that's repeated over and over and over again. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. happened to me too. Right, right. You know. And so we just say, we say, come and be saved. We say that every Sunday. Yeah, it's not like it's not like we even think it's miraculous, right? It's it is. Ordinary. It is. It is miraculous, right? <laughs> yeah. But but it's but it's become ordinary. For it's us, all, right? it's commonplace yeah. because that's what we. So have that's a common for, miracle. <laughs> where where if Rick was lifted off the ground, when God just you know and came three feet off the ground, we said that's that's extraordinary. That's an odd miracle. It's a, that's a, we we that's call a, that a miracle. That's a strong God. He's a good thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Always making funny. Always making funny yourself. Hey, I thought of something yesterday. I thought it was. I thought because we were talking, I was talking to some people who were dealing with weight, like I do, and and I said, you know what, you know, because Black Lives Matter. I thought you know, fat people matter, so I thought <laughs> FLM. <laughs> yeah, FLM. So I think I'm gonna make a bumper sticker. That's my fat. Fat people lives matter. matter. Yeah, fat lives matter. <laughs> fat cells matter. They do. Fat is yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, God did extraordinary miracles through Paul, so that even handkerchiefs and aprons. That had touched him were taken to uh, were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. <laughs> no, oh, she's oh, she, we're eight seconds behind. Yeah, she got that. It's funny when we say something, and a few seconds later we hear laughing on the other side yeah. of the wall. <laughs> you know what I've um, what I've read about this? Yeah, because, this is really cool. Yeah, and you know who knows, but 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 I've read some of the history in this, and Paul was a tent maker, so mm -hmm. he was. He would sweat and he'd wipe, he'd have these men, he'd sweat and he'd throw them aside and people would pick them up. Yeah. And this was, Ephesus had a lot that of... That was the handkerchief. Part. Yeah, the handkerchief. They had um, witches and warlocks and a right. lot of evil spirits, a lot of demonic stuff going on, right. a lot right. of exorcism. But right. they, we're going to come up against these seven sons of Sceva, they're professional right. exorcists because there's so many demons. Right. But this is called mystery religion. There was a mystery religion where they would, all, all, they would wear all white. And they would only be, and they'd be very clean and have all this white stuff. So to me, that people could be healed from a dirty, <laughs> sweaty <laughs> handkerchief is God mocking this mystery religion that you have yeah. to be very clean and right. white and whatever. These are dirty, uh, sweaty things. Because right. otherwise, 
this is an extraordinary miracle and God could use anything and he's using the opposite of what they believe is uh, yeah. godly, like he did right. in Egypt. Right. He, he kind of opposes every god they had, the frog god and the, and the, the yeah. god of the flies and all that. Right. But um, here, I'm not sure, I don't know if that's true or not, but I did hear that and I read about well, that. Well, yeah, I, I think that's Makes true. Sense. I, and, I, and the apron was because he was a tent maker and he would wear yeah. an apron. And so they would take pieces of aprons and they would send them out, not the entire apron, but pieces of the apron that come yes. up. And they would take the headbands. This was either a headband or a handkerchief. And or a Paul sweat, but one way there's sweat. Yeah. yeah, and he would, and so, but God's pushing back. They were saying in, in Ephesus, they were telling people you have to wear white and be clean right, right. to be healed. And God's saying, eh, not really. Yeah. <laughs> not there, really. There, were, there were also, we talked about this again yesterday too, but there were also the Ephesian letters. They were called the Ephesian letters. And this place was very superstitious. Ephesus was full of, there was at least 50 very strongly worshipped gods in the city of Ephesus. And, and there were lots of, it was lots of superstition and lots of, lots of witchcraft and mm -hmm. lots of demonic things happening in, in Ephesus. And you could go to some of these, some of these sorcerers, these witches, and, and you could get a Eph Ephesians letter. And if you needed somebody to be healed, they would get a letter and take it back and right. they would be healed. So I think this is God saying, wait a minute. Yeah. Just you know, here's my man. Just it's take, silliness. Yeah. Yes. But but he's using what was happening during the day. He's the culturally relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was taking what people already thought was that power, and it did. It had demonic power. And he used he put his power on something to show how great, much greater his power was. And I think that's why. Which he, he does. Had, that's yeah. what. Yeah. God yeah. pushes. That's yeah. why. I guess we could call them all extraordinary because what the world thinks is, wow, that's great. God says, no, this is, I'm great. This is right, how it is. Right. And actually, I don't know if you guys have heard of the seven wonders of the world, yeah. like the you know, Colossus at Rome and all right. of that. But this is one of them. In Ephesus, the Temple of Diana. Diana, she, yeah. Diana she's a Roman goddess. She's the god, she's mother god. She's the right. god of the moon. She's god of the earth. What we would yeah. say today, mother nature is her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was Artemis in the Greek. So when they're going to start person. yelling, yeah, the same, it's just the same god. But the temp, this temple, the theater, whatever, held like 25,000 people. This yeah. is one of the, they've excavated it. Right. So there's seven wonders of the ancient world. And this is, this one, is of one of them, them the yeah. Temple of Diana. Yeah. And this is where it is in Ephesus. And it was, and it was highly um, evil. Well, yeah. <laughs> there was a great deal of evil there. Not just, not just that they would come and worship, uh, but there was a lot of prostitution there, mm -hmm, lots sure. of things like that. Uh, they were, women were made to prostitute themselves to give money to the temple, and they're, they're all, making a lot of money. All off that of, kind of yeah, stuff. They, yeah, this was yeah, a uh, this was yeah. like the Eiffel Tower. So, I mean, it was yeah. a tourist attraction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People would come from all over to come there to see the temple yeah, to Diana. see the temple of Diana. And so that Paul's in a good spot. Yeah, yeah, he's in a great spot. But 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 ask yourself a question. Well, it, do you think that we should? anoint handkerchiefs now and send them out and anoint whatever. Well, the Church of God, People where do. I come from, yeah. did that. And they, they still do, I'm sure. But they did that a lot. And at the turn of the century, um, there was a huge plague in this country. Uh, it was really a world plague. And it was an influenza plague. And, mm -hmm. and over <clears throat> 5 million people died in that plague across the world. And um, they were the, the Church of God was asked to anoint handkerchiefs and send to people who wanted that to happen and they did they the church of god started out with started out with a with a, a publication called the gospel trumpet and in the gospel trumpet they would you know they would use that publication in that publication place as a like a clearing house and so people would write to them and ask them to do things so it was snail mail it took a long time yeah. right and some of these people with the influenza were really sick for a long time and so they would receive. They would receive as soon as they got as soon as they got a request for an, an, a, a handkerchief that was anointed and prayed over. They would send it out as soon as they could. They would re, and then would receive back a few weeks later the the Person reports of healings mm -hmm. and all this stuff. So I, I, it still happens today. Um, I mean, it, it happened. And one of the great things about God is is you could say, yeah, well, that's just somebody out in the Tulis that got a handkerchief and they just wrote back and who knows what's going on. But E.E. E. Byram, who was a part of the Church of God beginnings, um, and he was the, he was the, the the chief editor of of Gospel Trumpet, I believe. He was one of he's, I've got some of his books up there that I've read. They're great books. Anyway, so he E.E. E. Byram was was deathly ill. They thought he was going to die, and they came over and. 
they anointed a handkerchief and left it with him and because they couldn't go in and see him because of the influenza so they left it they they left it and he got healed so it's like wow boom you know and so so it was like god's going okay i'll show you well like it, it, someone it, it, you can see right here so they took an that. extraordinary miracle and made it ordinary yeah, so they yeah did because yeah, then yeah, it was extraordinary yeah, yeah, here, here's yeah, the yeah. bigger concept it's called a point of contact we right. see this with uh, the woman uh, the hemophiliac touching jesus yeah right and the and the lep he touches lepers if you believe the hand, if you know Jesus and you, and you anoint a handkerchief, God honors that. Why wouldn't He honor that? Right. It's um, it's a point of contact with God. By the way, church. I mean, right. some people oh, but I don't like church. I don't like the show. But if church <laughs> is your point of contact for God, come touch God here. Yeah, yeah. But just take Him with you, please. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, don't yeah, leave yeah. Him in the parking lot. But yes, anywhere. If the <laughs> yeah, Bible, a Bible is a point yeah. of contact. Right. Rick is a point of contact. You are. This show is. Mm -hmm. You know, a handkerchief. Why not? I would never diminish that. Right. Never. Um, but now things are misused, right. but obviously not that. Well, the reason I think it's important for us to to give extra biblical conversation about this, like E.E. E. Byram and other people, yeah. is because you're, if, if you are a student at all, you're going to open up a bunch of commentaries, and I mean a lot of them. And they're going to be written from a different perspective. And I, I, they're going to say this happened then, but it won't happen now. Yeah, and they're going to they're going to tell you that this is this is only for the time when the apostles were alive, and as soon as the last apostle died on earth, then God no longer does these kinds of miracles any longer. Right. He just doesn't do them anymore. Well, <laughs> I'm telling you, he does, <laughs> and uh, and so and, and there's many, many, many reports. I wrote I wrote um for the other church I was at I wrote a, a, a book called 50 days to a new you you won't find it. it it wasn't published I just gave it to our people and and every week people would come and they would get seven days worth of understanding and it was 50 days to a new you and the subtitle of it was building your faith so it was it was 50 days every day I had a, a, an entire lesson on faith and I used a lot of these conversations from from these these healing these healing conversations about faith and i used a lot of them because there's lots of them if you go if you go do the study yeah if you go do the research there's lots of them. and this was before the internet yeah 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 well no i we had the internet but oh, okay. but some of this stuff is not on the internet there must know? have been an extra day though because seven times seven is 49 every well week. i did I, i'm sure i did day another, 50. yeah 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 but <laughs> So anyway, but but there's so many stories about people being healed and about the like handkerchiefs and things like that. There are so many stories that have been verified. I have a book that I could show you over there that it's probably three inches thick. It's and it's it's about it's about in in, in Spokane County about the verification. You know John G. Lake. John Lake. That's way more than three. Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's huge and it's just full. It's, show you it's that over book. here somewhere. It's, it's right, right here. Oh yeah. It's right there. Well, this is three inches to Rick. Yeah. It's, it's the land of the giants. Yeah. That is not three inches. It's yeah. it, my head. That's, that's about his teachings on he, and healings and verifications of healing. John G. Lake is an incredible. It's a, so anyway, I'm just, I'm just telling you, there's, there's so much information that you can find that, that says this is still true. Now, one of, the, one of the things that I know that we should talk about is how do we know it's God? Mm -hmm. Because these people had power, too. Right. Well, that's the, da the danger. That's the danger is not is if, if you don't want to believe in miracles and be dispensational and write commentaries. Who cares? Yeah. Here's the danger. The danger is people will take handkerchiefs and start a handkerchief ministry, and they're not yeah. from God. Yeah. So we're we're going to see the seven sons right. of Sceva, right. and we saw Simon the Magus, the the magician. Uh -huh. The difference is this: these people want the power that Paul had, but right. they don't want to know God. Right. And some of and so, some of us want to go to church and be known, but we don't want to know God. You need to know God personally. And he'll either work through you with miracles or he won't. But you, but right. these people didn't want God. They wanted the... Well, let me tell you this. That's perfect. You know, what you're right saying there. is perfect. But let me give you a very easy way to understand. If 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 a person wants the glory, it's not of yeah, God. Yeah, okay, the glory. Yeah. Okay, if the person wants the glory, it's not of God. Look, nobody... Some of the reasons these things are hard... These, these, these stories are hard to find is because nobody wants the glory. You know, they want to give God the glory. This is God doing it. Yeah, you've this. never heard of John G. Lake. Yeah. And he doesn't yeah. want you to hear yeah. of him. Well, that's why the very in verse eleven, I think it's important, it says God did extraordinary miracles. So God is the one who gets the credit. Right. Yeah, Paul was being used. And they tried to lift Paul up, and Paul would have no bit none of it. 
Paul said, forget it. I'm not. Several places they tried to lift Paul up. This is and, why if yeah, Paul and Peter yeah. and James and John were on earth today, they take their name off every church. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't want you to, they don't want to, they, they don't St. Peter's be Basilica. No, yeah. no. They want God to be glorified. And that's, that's how you can tell. If, 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 if people want money for things, forget it. Mm -hmm. If people want glory for things, forget it. If people want you to be well so that you can stop sinning and love God more in your life and you can be well, take it. Right. <laughs> that, you know, it's the glory. But Look, people will yeah. hide their motivations. I'm just saying yeah, well, the you, story you, God's yeah. telling us here is yeah. people don't know him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so God, th that's why I think verse 11 is important because God did extraordinary miracles. Let God be the glorified one. Let God do the miracles. If he wants to use you or a handkerchief and, But whatever, you would agree yeah. that God also yeah. uses people who have wrong motives. He still uses them, even though they're not going to Sometimes gonna, he yeah. does, so, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I don't want to throw yeah. miracles away at all, right. but um, you don't want to drink from the wrong well, and you want to be aware You yeah. want to be aware of that. There's there's a lot of charlatans out there, but it, they work. it works. It's just yeah. maybe the wrong source, maybe the right source, but the people have gone sideways. They knew the Lord, God worked through them, and then they took it themselves. Well, and there, went was with a, it, there was right? a time that we read about in the gospel where people were, were doing things, and Peter and the rest of them said, Well, they're not with us. And, but what and, did Jesus, Jesus say? said, If they're not against us, they yeah, are with yeah, us. Yeah, if they're not against us, that's the issue. Right. And being against God would be trying to steal his glory. Yeah. Okay? So just look at that. Who, who, who gets the glory for these things? That's, ask yourself that question. And I think there are a lot of TV evangelists, and I think there are a lot of people on TV. I, I can think of one. I won't mention his name right now. That was really big at one time, and then he wasn't. Well, the reason he wasn't, I think, is because he kind of got big for his britches. Yeah. You know? And what I mean by that, he was, he was taking a glory. Yes. I don't think he thought he was. But I think he was. It's it's just common yeah, to men, yeah, and yeah, I wouldn't yeah. even put people like that down. I would yeah. just say no, that no, no, the no. miracle. That's it's, what it's, I'm it's, really, you it's really a Trump conversation because if you just made a silhouette and he wasn't called Donald Trump and you listed accomplishments, people would say this is a good accomplishment. They don't like the man. Right. And this yeah. is what Satan does. He tried to tear down. He couldn't tear down Jesus, but he tried to tear down Jesus. This man says, and, and they yeah. do this with Peter and Paul and whatever. The message is good. We're just people, and so people are going to criticize Rick and me and Peter and Paul and, and Jesus and Donald Trump, but they don't want to see the body of work or what, what's happening. Right, right, right. So look to the miracle. Look to God, look to uh, who's behind the curtain, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Look behind yeah you curtain. talk about the Wizard of Oz thing all the time. Yeah. Look who's behind the curtain. Yeah. So, so then verse 11 says, So that even handkerchiefs and aprons that had touched him were taken to the sick, and their illnesses were cured, and the evil spirits left them. So not only were they made well, but evil spirits. Because we're getting into the evil spirit yeah. story now. So now watch what this does. There's a kind of a reason I'm talking about the glory piece here, because Paul will have no, Paul will have no. He just doesn't want anything to do with this glory thing. He wants mm -hmm. nothing to do with it. But now some other people decide that they want that. <laughs> and so they get themselves in trouble. Well, glory or money, same thing. Well, it's the same thing. It's to build themselves up, yeah. right? It's a, Power. You, can, you, can, you, can have, you can be highly glorified if you're wealthy. Yeah, what good is glory without the money? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, so, so there's, a, there's a juxtaposition here. There's a contrast between, between people who want the glory and, and Paul who doesn't want anything to do with the glory. The guy's building tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's not taking money from anybody. He's not selling. He, they're taking his sweaty bands from him. Yeah, he he could, could uh, right? He could. He could start a ministry. He could start a. a yeah. He could start a. Charge man, him. I'm I'm gonna you know yeah you give me five bucks for this apron I'll be glad to take sure, it you yeah, know yeah mm -hmm. he could he could do that anytime but he doesn't he doesn't so watch verse thirteen it says some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits okay so. These are religious people. Yeah, mine are called vagabond Jews who were exorcists. <laughs> vagabond Cause they, Jews. Because yeah. they are exorcists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're driving out evil spirits. Okay, who I don't know which power they're using to drive out evil spirits. Could be the father of the Old Testament. It couldn't. I don't know. But again, see who gets the glory, and then you can tell where their power is coming from. I believe that, right? So watch. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of Jesus Christ over those who were demon possessed. Like they didn't know Jesus. Nope. Look, I want I want you to be really serious about this this sentence. If if you don't know Jesus, please understand. It's a dangerous thing for you to play around with that. It's dangerous. If you don't know him, don't act like you do. <laughs> you know? 
if you don't know him, if you haven't given your life over to him, don't act like then you, you don't know. know. <laughs> yeah, so don't so yeah. don't act like you do, yeah. right? You the, the only time the only time that that we see um, these kinds of things happen is when people are pretenders. Mm-hmm. Right and and God Ananias was, and Sapphira Ananias and Sapphira very dangerous right I mean they died I mean you, it's just very dangerous if you don't know Jesus to try to act like you know Jesus just please don't do it either that or be smart and give your life to Christ <laughs> just go all the way that's the easy way that's yeah. that's the best thing that's what Jesus wants for you in fact he's not mad at you he's not mad at you he doesn't do these things because he's mad at people. Jesus, Jesus allows these things to happen because he wants you to see how holy he is. He is God, right? So what? Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of, uh, of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. This is one of my favorite stories in the Bible. They would say, in the name of the Jesus whom Paul preaches. See, they don't know him. Mm-hmm. We, the, the, the Jesus that Paul preaches. Well, there was probably other people, like in Spanish, lots of people are named Jesus. So <laughs> there are probably other Jesuses or whatever, bar Jesuses or whatever. Yeah, well, they're, they're telling. Yeah, they yeah, know yeah. which one. Well, yeah, here's what to, Jews believe. Jews believe, and, and Jesus came up against this because he would cast out demons. And um, the Jews believed you had to have the name of the demon to cast them out. Right, right. And they would invoke God's name, but they're not allowed to say God's name. Because of the first commandment, don't take the name or second in right, vain. Right. So uh, uh, Yahweh right. or Elohim yeah. or Adonai, they wouldn't say it. Well, these exorcists said, we have the name to cast out demons. demons. We know the name, we know the name over it. And now we've got the name Jesus over it. Yeah. And that was a big game. They yeah, yeah, it was a game they, because they didn't know him. Now watch this. But that's why they're saying the Jesus who they're, they're doing all this hocus pocus with the uh, words. Right, yeah, yeah, right, right, perfect. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, what yeah, they yeah. do. They call demons out by name, by the name of God. Right. It's, so, yeah. so seven sons of Sceva. There was. I love this. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. So these guys, this is a chief priest in Ephesus. So these are these are real time Jews. These are Jews with a synagogue <laughs> and a chief priest, and they believe they can exercise. And it was, by his, the, and it was his kids. Yeah, and they're going to do it by suddenly by the name of Jesus because of what they see with Paul. Right, right. It, so, but if you don't know him, you can't use him. So they're just grabbing. What, they might have done this. I doubt Diana would they have done it in the name of Diana. But they, it's they a, could have. They, if they're going to pick up on Jesus and not know him just because it's popular and because it's working, yeah. they're they're they're. Not everybody is born Jewish. You know, you think I know the Old Testament unless I'm Jewish. Okay, this guy's a chief priest. He's got a position, but he doesn't know the Lord. Yeah. One day, the evil spirits answered them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops. Now, when that happens, you better know Jesus. Yep. Jesus I know. Now, watch. This spirit knows Jesus. Well, why? Because, look, these spirits, where were they from? Jesus created them. Yes. <laughs> created Jesus them. created them before the world was ever yeah, there. These, these are his servants. Jesus his was there. These were the these were the people that left with Satan. A third yeah. of the angels were kicked out. These are the demonic people that the demonic Anytime guess, anytime person, Jesus would call out a demon and he yeah. wouldn't call out a name. Oh, right. sometimes they came out, my name's right. Legion. Yeah, yeah. But they said, What do you want from us, yeah, Jesus? Because yeah, they, they knew him. They, yeah, they didn't say, Who are you? Yeah, they, yeah. Say, they knew who he was. Right? All the demons knew who Jesus was. So Jesus I know and Paul I know about. So they didn't even know Paul. No, they've heard of him. They've yeah. heard of him, but they heard of him. But who are you? <laughs> I think that is the funniest thing. Look, boys. Look at look at just because your daddy is a high priest means squat to us. Mm-hmm. You know we know Jesus and we've heard about Paul, but who the world are you to think you know, you've got in, power in, in over the chosen? Us? There's that yeah. scene where Mary, who is called Lilith at that point, yeah. is in, and she's demon possessed, and and um, Nicodemus comes in and, he, and the demon says, "You have no power over me." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Nicodemus, and you're and, and people think you're a great rabbi, and you speak all about the Bible, and the demon, and he's and he's fearful. Right. Now he comes to Christ, and if you right. don't know Nicodemus, it, we yeah. don't know this happened this way. But I love that scene because right. he's really saying to the demon, saying to religion, hey, "You no power over me here. Yeah, yeah. Stop, stop taking you. He the, had a he had incense and a candle, and he was <laughs> he was doing stuff. You know. Yeah, there's it's not superstition. No, it's not it's not a silver bullet. It's not yeah. a steak. It's not a, a clove of garlic necklace. Yeah. <laughs> it's not you know all that's that true. junk that's that we, true. that's all that stuff that we made up. Yep. To try to fight off vampires yes. or demonic things, the, the reality the is, is that of none of that is is worth squat. Right. You know, the only thing that only thing that you need when it comes to a spiritual battle in your life 
as Jesus Christ. But what I want you to see here is if you don't have him, you're in trouble. Because the spiritual battle starts between good and evil, and evil knows who the good is. Well, they're jumping they, into they the spiritual battle here. Yes, yes. yes. And they they're, don't have they're, any, they're naked. They, they don't, don't have, have any do business it. doing that. Nope. They have no business doing that. Yeah. Okay? So then he says, Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them, all seven of them, jumped on them and overpowered them all, all seven of them. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. Oh, my goodness. And here's what you know about this. Um, because Satan would not beat up Satan. So if these Jews uh, were, were not, e they were not calling on evil spirits for their power because the evil spirits wouldn't bug them. That, you know, they were called, they used the name of Jesus incorrectly and that's opposing the evil spirit. And the evil spirit said, well, I know Jesus, but you've got no power, goodbye. And so that, and yeah, it that wasn't is just, it wasn't just a goodbye. Well, yeah, <laughs> it was, they, he beat them severely. Yes. And, 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 and naked and wounded. Off, yeah. And they root and they, he ripped off their clothes and he beat the snot out of them and he sent them running away. Now, Satan is going to have a heyday with this. Satan's, Satan's going to see how powerful I am in an already very superstitious community. Yeah. Now, superstition even is greater. The, the power of the superstition even is greater. So that's, that's when you, when you want to do something for Christ, if you don't know him, don't do it. Just don't do it. You know, this is so But important. what comes out of this is, 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 is great. Uh, this great is, God yeah, that, knows how to use this. Yeah, God though, uses right? this. And yeah. I think it's because the demon, if they're going to tell this story correctly, <laughs> and Luke's writing it correctly, then the whole city's going to find out that they knew Paul. Mm -hmm. And that these this this synagogue with the chief priest and his seven sons couldn't do what they have been, probably been doing for a while. Yes. Well, but, this is the their demon, first time. But the demon said, "Yeah, like you said yesterday, it, it has to work. Other nobody comes back yeah. for another note if it doesn't yeah, work. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, this yeah. it's a demon controlled, Satan controlled town where spirits are just playing with each other. Right. Paul comes in and. Whoa, we and got a problem brings, here. And brings the spirit. Yes, the, and the now spirit. and now the battle's on. I told yeah, my mom yeah. this. She said, you know, you always talk about Satan, and I've never even felt this. I said, because you're on his side. You know, come to my side, and the battle will be on. Paul gets to town. The battle is on, and the seven sons of Sceva and this chief priest who were oh, exercising, playing a little game right, forever, right, 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 suddenly right. it doesn't work. In and fact, now they get fear. beat up for it. They get, and now fear. Yeah, and yeah. They, and and I and uh, what happens is people who God calls come to Him. So I want you to see something. What Satan means for good, God turns it around. Right. He always does. So these, I don't know what happened to these seven boys, but if yeah, I the, yeah. if I were one of these seven boys, I'd be going to Paul and say, "Man, tell me what ha just happened." Yes. You know, help me here. Because I had a demon call you and use your name. Yeah, I had a demon use your name, and he says he knows of you, and he beat the snot out of me and my brothers, and I need some help. I, I would run straight to Paul because that's where the power was, because they had seen Why did they think they could use the but name But we of know Jesus? that people don't always do this because, yeah. you know. Yeah, they don't, but that's what you should do, right? Yeah, of course. Stories like this should make you run to Christ. That's the point, right? And some, some people did. If the thing you trust in is overcome by something more powerful, go to the more, more powerful, powerful thing. Yeah, yeah. And you won't find anything more powerful than Christ. No, yeah. no. So, verse 17, when this became known, <laughs> well, everybody's going to know about it. Right. Well, you know, this, is gonna, this, this story is going to go like wildfire. Right. Everybody's going to know about it. They're, first of all, they're going to see these kids running out naked, beaten up, all bloodied. They're going to find out what happened right away, and it's going to just go like wildfire, like the Santa Ana winds are blowing this gas thing all over the place. It's, out, it's gone. When this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, so everybody knows it, Jews and Greeks, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high, in, in high honor. Well, that's what happened. Satan meant this thing to say, see how powerful I am? Look at you. You can't, you can't use Jesus' name. But when this happened, it scared everybody half to death. They thought that Jesus' name was strong magic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this yeah. is a town of magic. They saw, yeah, that's a, that's a perfect way to say Do you know how it? people yeah. have, you know, and we have yeah, this in kids' really stories good. like Hocus Pocus, or we say, 
Eeny, meeny, you know, we or um, open sesame. Yeah, 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 we yeah. do this a lot that our words have magic powers, and right. you know that if there's anybody they they do stuff, and they thought Jesus was that, and maybe yeah. you're using Jesus like magic. He's not magic. Yeah, he's there's not, no, there's he's no magic. Or a either. Santa Claus, either one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Verse eighteen. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. So what this did was it. it what it did was it spurred on a revival. They said, look, I believe in this Jesus. You know, if this Jesus, if this this Jesus is more powerful than what we just saw happen, because we've seen Paul cast out demons all over the place. So now, it, it, and, and I'm telling you, I believe in him because if I believe in him, I'm now safe. It became a... a, a a, a way for them to fight the spiritual battle to confess right. that they knew Jesus. So that's that's really what you're getting here. Mm -hmm. This is a way for you to fight the battle that's coming against you. Confess him. Jesus says, if you confess me with your mouth, what? I'll confess you to, to my father. father. And also, right? it said, mine says they believe, came and confessed and showed their deeds because they're going to throw away their books and stuff. Yeah. But um, the, the original sin of the garden is shame. And shame leads to guilt. And people have nothing, don't know what to do with their guilt. They have nothing to do with their guilt. And so when you meet Christ, here's where your guilt goes. You can actually have, that's, you're not going to get peace until you get rid of your shame and your guilt and confess, this is who I am to the Lord. Right. And, and that they have, you can't do that until you know the Lord. And watch what kind of people, watch what kind of people came to Christ. Yeah, those are witches and warlords. Yeah, a number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. Wow. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. How much is that? You know, mine said, I've heard different things. Mine says like a million dollars or something. Right. It's, whatever it is, it's, 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 it's a lot, it's of, a money. lot of money. Yeah. And these, um, yeah, these are sorcerers. Mine says, it's funny how, you know, mine says, uh, many of them which use curious arts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> these are witches and warlocks. Yeah. They, they and it, a drachma is a silver coin, and the way that you would earn a drachma is a day's work. So a drachma is one day's work. So, so 50,000 50, days, days of work. work. Yeah. yeah. It's basically your life. That's a more than yeah, your life. Yeah. Two lives. Yeah. That's a lot of money, right? That's a lot of money. So these these people these people saw this and it so put God in his proper place and put Satan in his proper place. And it put their relationship with him in such a way that they knew they couldn't be silent about it anymore. And they came and they openly confessed Christ. And they said, look, we don't want anything to do with this evil stuff anymore because there is power in it to destroy you. Yes. But God's power is greater. And that's what they, that's what they I have a, a friend of mine uh, came to the Lord and he got rid of, yeah. uh, we used to have records. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah, he yeah, got yeah, rid yeah. of all, and nobody told him to. No, no, no yeah, one at the church, no one said a word. He, he just, just decided it. to get rid of that stuff. Yeah. And so confession is, the, is, a, is a natural response to a loving God. Yeah. It just yeah. is. It's what Adam and Eve wouldn't do. They hid. Then they said, oh, you know, it was her fault. It's his fault. <laughs> yeah, they but, blamed. But yeah, they blamed. <laughs> but for us, um, you know, conf it, 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 if you, if you, when you come before uh, the living God, your, your response is, I'm wrong. Or something. Yeah. Well, in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely yes. and grew in power. Yep. So in what way in this? What does it mean in this? Mm -hmm. Their public confession of Christ. That's what it means in this. Okay, we we were this way. We don't want to be this way anymore. We want to belong to Christ. <clears throat> that public confession of Christ grew a wonderful swell of revival in this place. Not everybody yeah. in Ephesus yeah. could be a witch and a warlock or a sorcerer. There had to be people who went to them, right? Well, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them traveled from out of town to go to them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. The, the general population is seeing the sorcerers coming to Christ. Right. So this, so not not just there's this revival that comes to Christ, but it's taking out of this, uh, uh, taking its territory back from, from mm -hmm. uh, Satan because you can't, yeah. the guy you used to go to who said this, he now says Jesus. Right. That's a problem. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a problem for the demonic world because I'm going to go to you for one of these, what do you call them, those notes or something? Yeah, they're, and, they're called uh, Ephesian and, letters. Uh, I'm going to go for an Ephesian letter, and I go to his store, and he goes, uh, let me show you Jesus now. It's like yeah. the enemy is not going to like that. So this was a big, big victory. It's one thing to get people who are just neutral about Christ to come to Christ. And yeah. by the way, that is hard. But this <laughs> is getting the leaders of the demonic. Yeah, the demonic world is coming to Christ.
In Ephesus. In Ephesus. <clears throat> and this is a big deal. And there's and it's not just <clears throat> secretively. No. They were before this. They were being secretive. <clears throat> So God uses this to drag them out into the open and to confess him by mouth. And the Bible says when you confess him by mouth, you'll be saved. So mm -hmm. these, got, these people came out into the middle of the street. They burned all their stuff. It was worth all, who knows how, many, how right. much money. They burned all their stuff. They said, we want nothing to do with this anymore. We want to embrace Christ. And they began to confess who Jesus was in their life. And, how, and then this was just, this just started this wonderful revival in Ephesus. So these Ephesus were books was, that told boom. people how to call on demons. Yeah, these were, these were <laughs> cantation books. Yeah, yeah, these, were spirit, these, were, these are what you see when you watch a Disney movie and some this is Harry Potter Eye of Newt and all that stuff it's the Harry movie. Potter stuff yeah, with the, yeah which I don't like yeah, yeah. no I mean but it's just it's just re, yeah, re no, no no you're right it's yeah. it's yeah it's, it's reformulated but um, um actually I forgot what I was gonna say oh, sorry it's sorry. Bad. no it's not just uh we're in verse 21 did that help well, we can. Uh, we might. We probably should get to Demetrius right, or right, something right. like that. We should probably go through <clears throat> verse twenty-three, right? Yeah, because yeah. we got four minutes. Okay. It says after all this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Acacia. After I have, uh, after I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and and uh, Erastus. Erastus, to Macedonia while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. So yeah, he decides to stay in, in Ephesus, the place he couldn't go originally. The spirit stopped him. He's now going to stay the longest. Right. And and, I, and we we know that Corinth was a great um, ministry, but isn't Ephesus probably his biggest ministry? Because well, Ephesus had a huge. <laughs> it was huge. There was lots going on here, right? I mean, lots of things happened. People heard about this from all over the region, all over the Asia Asia Minor. And eventually, Mary goes back there. And yeah. um, or maybe she's there already. And John uh, goes. This is kind of a home base. So this, yeah. yeah this well, is this a... is he's been here almost three years. Yeah. So this is the longest he's spent anywhere in Ephesus. Mm -hmm. He the other places he doesn't spend this kind of time, but it takes. I want you to see this. This is important for people who are involved in ministry. It takes Paul almost three years of daily argument, and daily teaching in the temples of Tyrannius. It takes him almost three years in order for this to take place. And that's discipleship. Yeah, yeah. So it's it takes a while for people to begin to hear and understand and begin to believe the Word of God. And when they start to do that and they start to... this, I think this is so important. When they start to confess it openly. I think Christianity has lost its power because it's afraid. We're afraid to confess our faith openly. As Christians, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. We don't. Right. It's not politically correct. Look, tell political correctness to take a hike. Just open your mouth and tell people about Jesus. You know, Paul tears your faith. In the Christ. first thing that's happening yeah. is the little cottage industries. These magicians is torn down. Yeah. Next, they think, well, the temple's next. We can't have that. So that's yeah. going to be the next thing. Yeah. Because, yeah. 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 And by the way, the yeah. temple. Well, it is torn down. It is. To, it, 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 it does yeah. get torn down. But yeah. that's what they're going to get scared of next. You go. Okay. Fine. And some of these little magic art shops are gone, but yeah. Diana? well, this but this affects this affects their their livelihood. I mean, they just they just well, are less people going to the temple now? To yeah, Diana's absolutely. Temple? And, yeah, and, and with the prostitutes, yeah, they're they're losing money. Yeah, fewer people are going after the demonic, and there's and they're chasing and there's money after in the Christ. demonic. There's money in the demonic yes. because yes. Satan's not stupid, you know. And and if you go to Revelation where the finances and the, the Antichrist and all that, you can see how he uses commerce and whatever. And so, um, yeah, I think that um, if, if, if people will let, Satan will let you have the spiritual battle, fine, go to church. But when the money comes in, then a ruckus starts because that's, you know, I, 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 the scripture says the love of money is the root of all evil. Right. But money's powerful and, uh, and Satan uses money in a powerful way. Right. <clears throat> and here it's going to be a problem tomorrow, but here. You know, there, sometime soon, because we've been talking about it for so long, we should look at these churches because oh, the seven churches. Yeah, the, the, the church in Ephesus is the first church that he talks about in Revelation right. 2. It says, To the angel of the church to Ephesus write, These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven golden lampstands. So Paul is I mean John is writing back to the church of Ephesus through right. the angel. I know your deeds, okay? We just talked about some of their deeds. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked people. 
Ah, look at that. That's where that comes from. That's a compliment. That's a compliment because they were all wicked in the beginning mm -hmm. and they know how wickedness destroys and so they're not going to tolerate wicked people. That you have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not. They're going, look, you might act like, like the seven sons of Sceva, right? This mm -hmm. is Now this makes more sense, right? And have found them false. You have preserved and have endured hardship in my name and have and have not grown weary yet i hold this against you you have forsaken the love you had it at at first consider how far you have fallen repent and do the things you did at first you if you do not repent i will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place now I, uh, yeah they lost their first love they lost their first love so here they they had a first love of god here they wanted to they were they didn't they burned all their books millions of dollars don't you say this or a yeah. lot of pastors say yeah. this that follow someone's wallet sure you know, yeah yeah, you, yeah the, yeah, the, the yeah, money yeah. will follow your belief yeah so these people got rid of everything that was valuable to them in an earthly sense and they loved god they had a, a man a hot hot white hot love for god okay this is this is what we're talking about when we're talking about ephesus but as time goes on they lost that love so look that that's really what we're talking about we're talking about let let your life, <laughs> just let your life be all in for Christ. I don't know how else. Just burn hot for Jesus, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the same stuff, the same conversation. It's Ananias and Sapphira. Yeah, it was a money yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, watch pray for us. You want to do that? Yeah, Since uh, dear Heavenly Father, Father, we just thank you. And we know it's not even our work that we can burn white hot for you. Yeah, but and, and and we do get distracted by the world. We do get distracted by money. We do get to, off on spiritual things. Uh, but Lord, um, thank you for your word, which is our anchor. And thank you for brothers and sisters in Christ who can encourage and exhort us like Rick did yesterday. And I just pray that we would um, respond, to respond to the call, Lord, and we would stay in you. And I just thank you for those uh, listening and watching today. I pray you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remember your favorite. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Got to get that.